Okay, I'm going to do a video um, just on my experience really and I'm going to call this video Lies, Lying and Liars um, also False Christians, Bad Christians and Growing Christians now I was impressed to write this through um, A, I don't, I really hate lying um, something as a you know i've almost suffered uh, for the whole life of a lie you know being lied to and, and lying is one of the most dreadful things so i wanted to share the how the really from the scriptures from the word how how the lord is really hot on lying he doesn't he hates lying it's uh a despicable, a despicable thing. Now I can remember the first time I, uh, I consciously ever remember that I lied, and it was to save my own face, really, to save my own embarrassment. I lied, and uh, it was in the primary school. Uh, I was five years old, and it was a wet day, and uh, we were out on the playground, and there's lots of puddles. And I, being rebellious, we used to have to go out of the school in an orderly fashion and walk all the way around the school, single file, to the playground because we, we couldn't, because there's a, um, a driveway, we weren't allowed to go across the driveway because in case cars were coming in and out, so we had to go all the way around the school from our classroom, out the front door, all the way around the school to the playground rather than just go out the door round the corner we were there had to go all the way round it was school policy so um, on the way back from it had been raining and all these outside the back of the classrooms uh, each classroom had a, a door onto the uh, onto the pathway round round the school and the, uh, and puddles were sitting and there was a ledge step before you the patio doors would open up onto this ledge step and then it would from the step you'd go down onto the pavement now around the steps there's all these puddles gathered and we're, and rather than walk single file i was at the back of the queue jumping on the jump jumping over the uh patio steps and, there, and on one of these patios there was a deep puddle and I landed in it and the water shot straight up my legs and it looked, looked like I wet, I wet myself and all the all the school were laughing at me, you know. And I, and I, I was like uh, embarrassed. And uh, I think, I can't quite remember how it happened, but I think I blamed someone for doing it. There's a, you know, a ruckus. And uh, I got called in by the teacher and... Uh, because I was so embarrassed by all the, the scornful mocking of the children. Oh, he's wet himself, you know. <laughs> I was like, I'm oh, really, sh like the scornful shame of it. I, I blamed it on somebody else and it really upset this young boy that I blamed it on, quite rightly so, you know, it was really wrong. And, and, and it really touched my, con it really seared my conscience just to tell that lie. And that was the first rule. I probably lied at home before and never anything like that serious where it was blaming somebody else and that that really touched that you know that really chastised my conscience and uh i did you know i confessed and said i'm sorry that i'd lied and you know, i was really convicted and i didn't like that conviction so i confessed and that's one of my early experiences of learning a not to lie and b to be honest about it so i you know it was a great lesson and uh, because of um, my trauma injury, and it was never dealt with, it, it was omitted. So omission is another lie, and that, and I, you know, that's not a nice thing to live with. Any any lies are, are terrible. So I dug out some scriptures of, of some places where, how the Lord is um, expressed how He feels about lying, and also as I was writing this writing these scriptures down I had an experience with a excuse me a Christian friend um, now he's just like me he was um, 
he was like a, a long time standing member in the uh, Mormon church. But he, he had an experience as a child where he called upon the Lord because he did you know, he had a tragedy in his family and he turned to the, he didn't have anyone to turn to and he turned to the Lord and that's when the Lord answered his prayer. So, now, I can't say whether this man was saved at that point or, or, or the beginning, you know, that's when he was born again, I, I don't know, but then he, growing up as a, a young man and... Uh, I don't know his Christian walk, his background, but he joined the Mormon church and raised a family in there. And uh, so he'd recently come out of the Mormon church a few years ago. And like me, he was bat battling with his, with his salvation, you know, am I saved, am I not saved? And, and I think he's, uh, because of his tragedy as a young child, he, he's very insecure. And he told me, I'll tell you what it was about. Um, he uh, told me an event of, that he'd, he'd been involved with. And he, it was um, in handing his resignation into the local bishop and the bishop confided in him and said he didn't believe it. And that's an apostate offence for a, a called bishop, you know, because the Mormon church believes that they are called by the Lord, but they're not. They're, they're just given a ticket from the head office and they pick out who they want the bishop to be, which is corrupt, really, because they can... Usually it's a stranger or, you know, like most, you know, even the Christian ecumenical false churches, the, you know, the sisters of the whore, they're all, um, you know, they're placed. You can't, you don't get to choose it. You know, it's not grassroots and elders raise up from the ground. These people are positioned tactically, you know, or, or who they deemed the best person for the job. It's not, you're not directly called by the Holy Spirit as, as they falsely teach. And this bishop actually confessed as him, he was given in his notice, uh, his letter of resignation to this bishop. And he asked him the question, well, do you believe that Joseph Smith was a prophet? And, and, and the bishop confessed, well, no, but I just go along with it. And that, that, you know, that I mentioned that in another video and the testimony I, I was giving and, and I repeated that. And I told him that I'd repeated that and he had absolutely went ballistic at me. And I thought, well, why, why are you going ballistic at me? I've not confided, broken any confidence, really. You, that, that, you know, like the scriptures say, that, that which manifests is light, you know. You don't keep things in the secret. And he, oh, he's my friend, how dare you do that? And I said, well, Christ is my friend and I, that's... That's something that should be revealed. You know, this man's a false teacher. He's lying and deceiving people. And you're defending him over the gospel. So I, I rebuked him for that. And, uh, you know, maybe I should have asked his permission, but to go off at me like that and then attack me personally after, you know, after all the um, intimate things and vulnerabilities he knew about me. It was in a character, character assassination upon me and I thought, well, that's a bit out of proportion. And I and, and we had this to and fro over the internet, email, back and forth. And I, you know, I was using scriptures, you know, and he was, he wasn't coming back with scriptures, but his emotions, you know, he's really upset by that. And I, and I was trying to, you know, correct him and say, well, you need to defend the gospel, not, you know, not your pride. And uh, after a while, I had to separate. And uh, he just got, he threatened me with the police. Then I, I, I sent him the scriptures back. Well, you don't, you don't hand a brother over to the law. And I've got, a, 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 you know, my dad's got a dementia, and he, he. Um, scraped his tire in a car park and he had to leave the car there 
because of his dementia, he cut, he walked home, and then when he went to go back to get the car, so you know, so he reported to him, he couldn't remember where it was. So I had to phone the police around to track down the car, and I packed up driving because of a car accident, and I asked this friend, this Christian friend, to give me a lift to go and retrieve the car. Now I was insured on the car. I, I hadn't renewed my license. Or so, uh, I'm a full licensed driver, and I told him that I was honest. I told him that I said, "Look, I haven't, you know, I haven't got f updated my license, but I am insured. Would you give me, you know, the, all I can do is either first I had to track down the car, and then um, when we located it, and that's another story. That, you know, there's some divine help in that." to track the car down and recovered the car, changed the spare wheel and he drove behind, drove behind me and I drove it home, it was only a few miles down the road and I thought well if I get pulled over I'm just going to have to be honest and say look I haven't re I've got a full licence, I just haven't renewed it, it's out of date, that was the only offence, you know, I can't really see that's a criminal offence <laughs> but um, he was... Uh, threatening me with the police because his uh, pride was hurt and so I had to separate so and then he was lying he, he you know he, there were there was things that the Lord the Spirit was saying to separate from this man previous to that and I I, I ignored I kind of didn't didn't go through with that I I did but then he taught me around you know this friend taught me around and I thought well you know, I wavered, I was a bit soft, though. that's a weakness of mine, you know. And that was a chastisement for me for not listening to the, what the Holy Spirit was teaching me to separate from him. So I don't know what quite is going on in his life. Uh, I, I do believe, you know, since then he's he's confessed, he's, he's confessed Christ. And, and, you know, I do believe he is safe, but um, perhaps he's just a very... Uh, insecure carnal Christian and for that reaction I just couldn't believe it and I, I said you know I'm even doubting that you know I even questioning your salvation now and then I realized that he that really knocked him so I'm thinking well maybe you know obviously he's very insecure and then I kind of um, sent sent to and fro that you know gave him some scriptures but he just wasn't reading the scriptures so he wasn't listening so I had to completely separate and he was still threatening me with emails and uh, and then I had to block his emails so that was a, a whole day you know and then he's accusing me of being the devil and I wasn't saved and oh, it just got really ugly you know and very painful and I said you know you really shouldn't do that to another brother that's really you know, disproportionate. All I was doing was standing up for the truth. And you know, it's all out of attack for me and, you know, like vengeance. So I, I separated for that. So that's one experience. And he was saying, oh, I'd never do this to you. I'd never do that to you. And then five minutes later, he's doing it. He's doing exactly what what I was, you know, saying. The first time when I, um, I was prompted to separate him from him, I was... I was explaining my vulnerable condition and that, uh, you know, I really didn't need any unhealthy relationships in, in, in quite a gracious way. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm your friend, I love you, all this and all this and all this and all that. And then it just went, it completely went from one, swung one way from the other because of this incident and that sort of caught him in his guile, if you like, and... And now it's I, I've had to hand that over to the Lord to to judge him and deal with him and help him and so all I can do is pray for this this man and his family and his family's all out of fellowship. But, um, some of his family members aren't saved and they don't believe in Christ after their Mormon experience. But but his faith has stayed strong in the Lord. Um, but his family sort of you know. It's, it's a real the consequences of joining these false systems is a you know it's a, a it's a sear on your conscience um as i learned um when i i was 23 when i was saved and i called out to the lord and i knew i was saved but i didn't 
have the confirmation from the scriptures that I was saved, but I knew that the Lord had answered my prayer and sealed me with the Holy Spirit because, you know, that love and that joy, you just cannot, that never leaves you, that, that, that sustains you, that will never blow out, you know, even some of the bad things I've done, I, I, I would never forsake my faith in Christ, you know, Christ is behind me, before me, I, it, I, I couldn't ever give up my faith no matter how bad my life was. So um, when I, being so naive, when I called upon the Lord, um, you know, I wanted fellowship and I, the Holy Spirit was kind of testifies that the only advocate you need at you know, the church is, is Christ, you know, that the church is in you. What I really needed was up to find other brothers and sisters, not join the church system, and that's where I fell prey. And so my first two years of salvation were, were, were before I joined the Mormon church, it was sitting in the corner being absolutely sifted by Satan. And, you know, um, I, was, didn't, I wasn't disciplined in my scriptures. And, and that's what you get from not listening to the, what the Lord tells you. And I didn't know any different. It was kind of an experience the Lord knew that I would go through and that I would fall by the wayside immediately. And there was no one, there was no Christian ministries that I, I was aware of. There was no internet. This was in the 19, you know, nine, about 1992, 1993. And so I, would, I wouldn't go in any, any of the churches because I knew the Church of England was a load of, you know, a load of rubbish and the Catholic Church, and that's another no-no. So I, I, all the charismatic churches, I, I couldn't stand them because I'd seen all the fruits of it and all the hullabaloo, you know, and that, that to me that wasn't Christianity. So I had a testimony before I was saved that they were all man-made and the gospel, whatever the gospel was, it was lost. It wasn't in those buildings. So that's how I got caught out to this, all the Mormon lies that I was told about the Mormon church. But before that, I was completely sifted by Satan. And I, 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 in my naivety, I got interested in like looking at New Age stuff. I didn't, I didn't buy into it, but I did look into it and all the spiritualist side. And, and with my vanity, I was a very vain person because of what I suffered. So my vain imagination was always going with me and I was, you know, experiencing trauma mood swings, you know, like um, depression, severe depression and then severe elation, you know, going up and down. So I was, I was a very vulnerable person. So I had to go through all that experience to to be disciplined, really. And the Lord turned all that around in his wisdom for, you know, for my maturity, for my for strengthening me. It all, it all came good. And uh, so I knew that the consequences of being in those systems and I also knew that and then, then I come out oh into the Christian world and that's another you know that's like a free for all punch out that you, you come out onto the law onto the stage and the internet and my first encounter with the internet was all this fights going on and with Christians it was like what is going on where is you know what's it all about I had to find my way through find the path the straight and narrow path through that and that let you know that led me on to the truth to study the scriptures and and by that time I'd, I'd fallen in love with my my Mormon King James Bible the text of the Mormon King James uh, the, the King James not not all the Mormon stuff I, I dumped all that when I left it you know and and the Lord delivered me from that, from by the Holy Spirit and by building me up in the Scriptures. I, I only really ever spent a year of activity in the Mormon Church, although I was a member for over nearly fifteen years. So part, you know, that was a big lesson of my salvation. And then that's then you come across all the, you know, you lose your salvation and all that that junk, and the, and then I had to study that out and I had to get gain the confirmation that I already had from the Holy Spirit to, to find that in the, 
the, the scriptures and then I did and then I found other brother elder brothers teaching that and that built my built my testimony up and, and thank the Lord for those brothers and all the brothers that they learned from you know going going back since the uh, beginning the beginning of the gospel and I gained a testimony that the, the, the truth's always been on the earth you know there's always the Lord's always had people called out of, that, of those systems and you know I don't, you know, I think the Christian church has always been separate from the majority of Christians. The Christian church systems, you know, the world church, I think, you know, but you just don't see these people. You don't, you don't, you don't encounter them unless you, you, uh, um, they were the ones planting the seed and they were the ones that, that helped you onto Christ. I didn't have that. My uh, testimony was over a long, long time. I think the earliest seed planted was probably um, have it, having a... My dad's mum was a, a Christian and she had a King James Bible. But I don't think her husband, my dad's father, was a believer. I'm not really sure what his personal faith was, but my gran was very... Um, very sober-minded, and she she studied the scriptures because I I, inher I was the only one who read it, so I inherited the, the a big leather-bound Bible, and uh, I would as a child I'd go through it and look at Revelation. I was fascinated by the Revelation, and you know it's just such a vast book. It was you know mind-blowing really to the, the the amount that was in there. And then occasionally I'd, you know, in quiet moments, I'd go through it. I didn't understand it. And then in the junior school, our headmaster, he, he was a he was a hell preaching, you know, um, because in the assembly we used to, we used to have, um, you know, Bible, uh, it was a really, it was, it was faith based. It was about Christ. It was about the gospel. And then you'd have the, like the, the church seasons, the harvest festival, and Easter and Christmas, and every everything would be around the faith in Christ. And he's in the assembly. He would read out the Old Testament, the New Testament, the resurrection, and these things. You know, these these things nourish me. You know, I really I I believed, and I was starting to believe that was the seed being planted. Especially the resurrection, that really struck me, and that stuck with me. And the the hell preaching, you know, and he, he used to say to me, Hopkins, you're on a knife's edge, you know. And I look back now and I think, well, that, it used to frighten me, you know, you're on a knife's edge, you know. I knew what it meant, I meant, I was on a... If I get, you know, if I step out of line, I'm, I'm in trouble. But looking back at it now, it was almost like you're on a nice edge, and that's how I feel. You know, in the Lord, I'm on that nice edge. I'm, I'm saved. I'm safe. I'm kept uplifted. I'm kept um, upheld by by the grace of Christ. I'm on that nice edge. But I, but before I used to look at it a negative way. Now I look at it a positive way, and now I can see that my testimony comes from that. So I had to go through that, am I saved? And, and then, and I think my friend was going through that as well and still is going through that perhaps. And that perhaps that's something he's got to work out. And so that was, that was an experience I, I, I wanted to share on, on about lying because he, he, did, he did tell some lies. Now I'm very, you know, I'm not saying I, I can't lie and I don't lie, but um i wouldn't lie willfully that's something i'm quite strict on i don't like lies i'd rather be honest you know even probably when he shouldn't be i'm honest um so lying is uh something i wanted to cover because it's something i feel very strongly about and, and another another experience was I, I hadn't really come across many was Calvinists and uh, I feel that they're liars and they're lying, 
you know, it might be deceived, but deception, you know, you can be self-deceived. That's you, You're kidding yourself. That's a lie. You're living a lie. So that's another lie I wanted to encounter. Another experience I've had recently is um, I come across a video and it... And I thought this sound, this stinks of snobbery, you know. And I hadn't really, I'd heard brethren uh, t uh, say about these Calvinists and all the titles. And uh, I, it's another thing I didn't understand all the lingo, uh, what people were talking about, um, like Lordship Salvation and all, all this stuff. And you know, I had to work all through that. And, you know, and, and I actually encountered some of these people and they say, you know, knocking the pre-tribulation rapture. Now, my testimony is I'm a... It, now, to use the terms that are used, I would say I'm a dispensationalist or a semi-dispensationalist, you know. I believe there's many dispensations in the Gospel, you know, there's the, the pre-flood, the pre-Israel, then the prophets, then Christ's ministry, then the gospel to the Gentiles, then the dispensation of the last days of Jacob's trouble. That's another dispensation where it turns back to Israel. And I, and um, when I first heard of pre-tribute, you know, the rapture, the calling away, I had to study that out and be a Berean. And I, I gained a testimony of that. And I, I cannot... Um, see any other with the scriptures the learning to divide the word and what the Holy Spirit's been nurturing me is I cannot see how the the body of Christ goes through the period of wrath you know the seven years or the or the wraths in and I, I understand that the, the the worst parts in the second half but the whole seven years is the is is a period for Israel. I don't see how what, where the church body comes into it, and and also the scriptures in Thessalonians says oh, we've we've been delivered from wrath, and and we're all come back. All the saints will come back with Christ in the, in the second second coming uh, in the the day of the Lord when he when he touches down on the Mount of Olives, and um, I don't see that the church go can go through the tribute. Uh, Jacob's trouble, you know, uh, and then further study, you know, who are the saints in that? Well, they're the people that are going to believe while they're going through it, and and then the restrainer is holding back that event, and that of, and that event will be marked, I believe, by the take the the statue taken away of the church. So I'm, I'm not going to get onto the rapture, but I just want to just share my position. So. I, I'm a dispensationalist, born again, Bible believing, semi dispensationalist, if that's, or multi dispensationalist, I would term it, or, or two halves, you know, like, like it's laid out in the scriptures, you know, the dispensations in the scriptures, the prophets, Israel, the prophets, then the, then the church, then the transition, there's even, the, you know, the Lord's ministry is to Israel. Then there's that little transition, and then it, then then Paul comes along, and then it's the gospel to the to the Gentiles. It's to the Jews first, but to the focus is on the Gentiles because the it, the Jews have rejected it. So I'm a dispensationalist. A pre it's termed pre-tribulation rapture or pre-Jacob's trouble rapture, however you want to politically, or or the correct phrase for it. I'm. You know, I, I I was saved. I was a complete blank sheet. I I didn't have any knowledge of church history. You know, that's something I've had to dabble into, um, like the Fox's Book of Martyrs and the, some of the church history, and some of the more famous people through who had testimonies and kept journals and written their testimonies and preserved them for us to go and research. You know, I, I don't know all these different people I'm a, I'm a blank sheet and I you know and I, I think that's the a wise thing really in the Lord that I am like that I'm not I don't have that knowledge I have some knowledge but my knowledge is in the scriptures and not and that's what I stick to the what the Bible says not what other brothers have said in the past although you know 
they have some truth, you know, they have truth, and they also have some error, but we've got that hindsight, that the hindsight from their mistakes, plus we have the scriptures as well as they did, but we have that further understanding and hindsight carried forward through their experiences from all the brethren. So gratefully, so my testimony really has been one carry on the Lord's shoulders and, and, and lots of lessons. I was quite a difficult child for the Lord. Um, for, you, know, you know, I've been on the reins, I've been in the doghouse quite a lot. And that's all been to my good and that's what's steadied me and, and you know, made me more resilient in the word. Um, and not not so much to throw the towel in. I don't backslide so much. So the Lord has, praise the Lord, and through His grace, He's He's built me up through those experiences. So that's one of the motives. I want to ship. You know, I'm I'm doing these videos. Is is the things I've learned, and I just want to share them with other other people. So there's that in, that that encounter in context to lying, and. You know that I don't believe he's a false Christian, but I believe he's a carnal Christian. Now I I heard this term carnal Christian, and a lot of brothers use it. Oh, carnal Christians! You know, I'm thinking, what's a carnal Christian? What somebody who smokes and drinks? I thought, well, that's me. I'm a carnal Christian. No, I think a carnal Christian is more emotional and less spiritual, perhaps. You know, a bit um, if they like to throw the rattle out of the pram and they don't listen and they squabble, you know, unjust, perhaps unjust measures, um, comparing, you know, that that's more fleshy, that's more carnal, motivated. I, I would say I'm more, I'm not blowing my trumpet, I'm, I'm praising the Lord, I'm boasting in the Lord, I'm more of a spiritual Christian and, and I, I've learned to follow the Spirit because that's all I've had. And that, you know, the Lord's faithful and he's, he, you know, blessed me so much with the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's taught me everything. And then to discover it in the scriptures to confirm that that spirit, that is the Holy Spirit teaching me. Oh, that's that's a false spirit deceiving me, you know. You've got to have the, I've got a testimony, you need both. You can't rely on the, the spirit all the time. You you got to rely on the Holy Spirit and you have to rely on your faith in Christ with the study of the Word. And that's what's uh, given me a testimony. So some of the things I'd like to, you know, that's one of the motives I'm passing it on. And because I've really struggled, I want to reach those people perhaps that don't feel like they're, you know, the answer's there for them in the Scriptures or... Well, people can't relate to them so much because, you know, they're stronger, they're more resilient, they've come, they were called out from being strong already, they're probably st just stronger than, than most Christians are before they were saved, and, you know, there are people that are very sober, that aren't saved, they're just naturally, that's their lot in life, they're, you know, they're strong, they're disciplined, and that's their upbringing, their environment, and and just what they've been lotted with. So um, that's where my heart is really reaching out for those weak people like myself who struggled, and and I, and I feel that's where the Lord sort of put into my heart to share, just to share my experiences in my faith and my walk with with the Lord. So um, I wanted to cover those two examples of. Um, of lying, um, and another, yeah, uh, meeting the Calvinists. Now I think that, you know, that's a lie. I think, well, are these real Christians? Are these now my instinct with these Calvinists or these groups of people that a they actually rip apart your eternal security and they rip apart the pre-tribulation rapture. I call it the pre-tribulation rapture position which I believe is a correct position and I've actually found some study of his you know Christians in the past that they've always held to that and then you get this argument oh it's a Jesuit seed planted and they try and show you it's false well I listen to what the Bible says not what the Christians say 
you know, I listen to what the Word of God says, and, and to me, the Word of God clearly states that, you know, the body's not, A, it's not going to go through that period, so that's a, that's something I want to pass on, is not to trust anyone, but to, to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't understand this, I'm really struggling, can you tell me, show me the truth? And then you go in faith on your knees and you humbly put your heart, your bowl empty, you go, Lord, I'm, I'm empty, I don't understand this, can you show me in the scriptures? And then you study it out and the Lord goes, bang, there you are. And, it, and that can be after five minutes of reading. And then you and then you could doubt, and then he'd give you another part, and then he'd give you another part. As long as you keep going with your bowl empty, he will fill it every time. The Lord's faithful, and that's part of my testimony in my walk, in my um, dependency, my full dependency on Christ, and not you know not others, not what I think, but what the Lord's shown me. And I come across this. Um, body of it was actually a a video now it was a good video but it, it uh well no it wasn't a good video it was totally ripping apart i watched a good video and following this i caught this one and thought i'd look on it it was it was the same subject done by and i was looking for videos about the the jesuits i found one really good then i found this one and he was tearing apart you know like uh those two points and i thought who are these people are they real christian are they safe christians or are they there to that are like spy us out and plant seeds or are, have the, are they real christians that have picked up the seed I, I really don't know but my my discernment was it, it was very proud it was very sharp very fawny you know uh, we we're, we're the elect sort of thing and i thought well this isn't right this is like this so i like had to write a comment put some scriptures down to counteract the spirit i felt and you know i, I don't ever want to question any believer's faith or whether they're saved or not because only the lord knows what's in people's hearts but um i didn't like it one bit and it's not something I've really encountered very much of like I hear brothers saying they're dealing with these people all the time and I can see them you know the uh, oppression that they're under and they're always combating these this area you know they're always under fire in this area trying to defend that area contend for the faith in that area and I actually encountered some of these Christians and you know, I, I thought, wow, you know, I've just met one. These, these brothers must come, come across quite a lot all the time. And uh, thankfully, I haven't. But this is, you know, for in the future, I'm a bit more, a bit more clued up to deal with it and expect it and understand it. And who, you know, now I know a bit more what, what they're talking about. So that now I feel or discern, I don't feel is the wrong word, I I reason it free and my discernment is that they are either spies, they're false, and they're there to they their plants, tears, to lead people away, into cat you know, to lead them into bondage, to captivity, to to lead the young Christians out off the path into false areas you know to, to cause problems cause division and uh, that was an experience I wanted to share and another experience in my walk I wanted to share was the first time I come across a, a, a teacher I knew when I examined his ministry was teaching you know anti antichrist or or, did, or leading away from the cross. Now this was, um, now the min ministry was called the seed of Abraham and I hadn't ever dealt with this before. So this was an experience for me. I had to really get over um, the politeness of, you know, that I, I sort of within my flesh and really go to the, the word and deal with it with the scriptures. 
and I was going back and forth with him trying to contend in this issue about uh, now what it boiled down to he was a, a Jew and he'd set up a ministry as if he was a born again Christian and then get leading loads of Christians back into works, back into temple observance, dietary observance, keeping the law strictly. And I was saying, what about, you know, this, the scriptures doesn't teach this. And he was ignoring the scriptures and going all around the houses. And, and one of the first things that alarmed me was all these Christians had sent he was asking for donations and saying that he's this anointed, anointed one, like a prophet. And he is uh, needed money and, and some of these Christians had given over £20,000 of their saving to him. £12,000 and lumps of money and gone and followed him and were his disciples. Now, I, as I was emailing him, I was putting all them on the list. And I was trying to rebuff him with the scripture, saying, look, you're wrong. You teach that Jesus was crucified on a stake. That was my first red flag. So I had to contend for that. And then, then the works, you know, he was teaching that Paul was saying, you know, you have to festival observance and dietary observance and all this. And I felt it was leading people away. And I contended with it back and forth. And that's when I, I, I discovered, you know, he's a spy, he's a Jew. And, it, you know, he wasn't genuine. And he wasn't answering the scriptures. He's just going around the houses and avoiding the, the word. So I rebuked him and, and then separated. I was being a bit wishy-washy and I was getting convicted for that. And then I'd go back and be a bit more a bit more firm and that built me up that was the first experience i'd i'd really have with encountering that and that and that strengthened my faith and and conviction and that and that taught me a lesson and his name was avram and and, and he was you know the sabbath observance and you have to observe the sabbath well then i had then i showed him all the scriptures well you know it, it we're in our liberty, we can keep the Sabbath, we're in the Sabbath rest, you know, Hebrews 4, we've entered into that rest, you know, the Lord's the Sabbath. And um, I, and all, all his, you know, all his so-called disciples were like, oh, how dare you speak to an anointed man of God like that? And, uh, and I said, look, guys, you've been deceived, you know, here's the scriptures, and they all peeled off. And then, it, then it was just back and forth with me and him and uh, it led me to see who he was, to discern who he was. And I said directly, you're, you're a Jew and you've come to spy out and lead these people astray. And then I didn't hear anything from him again. And he got angry at me, oh, you're not saved. You know, you don't know anything, you know, I'm a Jew. You know, because um, he was posing as a um, Hebrew Christian. Now, he may have been a Hebrew born-again Christian and then strayed off the truth, but I, I didn't see that, not not because of the, the key things that you can lose your salvation. And that was one of his teachings. And another teaching is that Christ was um, trying to prove that Christ was uh, crucified on a stake. Well, the scripture says, you know, about the cross, you know, it's foolishness to those who don't believe, you know, to those who believe, it, you know, it's, it's powerful, uh, you know, forgive me for my not quoting the scripture accurately. And I, I don't know where the scripture is to look it up. Uh, so that was another thing I wanted to include in, in the lying uh, and, and that experience of dealing with that and, and then the contention and the persecution that that brings and all that persecution and all these experiences are um, just good, you know, they're good, you know, they're praiseworthy that, that shows that you're, you know, in faith, that you're, you're on the right path, that you are, you know, you're, you're on the straight and narrow and you're walking with the Lord and 
and you come across these experiences and I've not had as many because I my, you know, I'm not as active as, as some brothers, but I have, I do experience it. I do experience the oppression and the persecution. And even when I was inactive, I, you're persecuted by just the secular world, you know, in every avenue you you come across persecutions for no reason, you know. Um, even when you're the devil's got you on the floor, you still get persecuted. It's worse, you know, it's harder, I find. Um, because the devil's afflicting you and uh, to smash you and keep smashing you so you don't get back up. But thankfully the Lord picks you up. You know, if you point, you look, you, you keep your eye single to the Lord. Even when you're down, you know, you keep your eye on the Lord. He, he's able to get his arm around you and lift you up, put you on your feet and dust you down and, you know, encourage you forward, correct you, encourage you forward. So that was another, um, the third thing I wanted to include was those, those three examples. Um, my friend who lied, the Calvinists who are teaching lies, and, and the ministry seed of Abraham. And, uh, you know, he changed his name to Avram, because that, apparently that's the Hebrew name for Abraham. I don't know if that's true or not, but he goes by that name. Um... <clears throat> so I wanted to include those experiences in, in lying and I've written uh, some scriptures now. Um, so I wanted to share a bit, of, just a bit of my motive really and uh, a bit of my position as a Bible believer, as a Christian, what my position is just so, because I haven't done a study on the rapture and I just far more capable people that have done that. Um, uh, you know, it's not an area I'm really strong at. Is uh, laying down scripture studies. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm doing it the way as best I can, and, and I'm just going to write. I've just written, picked out scriptures, and and um, what have come to my mind as I'm, uh, you know, uh, just putting down some notes. What's come to my mind as I'm going through those notes. Uh, so. I'm just going to read some scriptures. Uh, John 21, verse 15. Now this is uh, part of my motive, really. Uh, uh, you know, reaching out. I feel the Lord, you know, first. I read the scripture. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Now, that's very interesting. Now, the Lord follows up on that. He says, feed, He reiterates that, Feed my, then he says, Feed my sheep. But he starts with lambs. So, you know, that's the Lord showing his order. The, his first concern was for, for young Christians, you know, for the, the weak and as a shepherd, you know, his concerns for the most needy, you know, the, you know, the, the sheep are like all together, the lambs are a bit more vulnerable. So that's something I've, we've all experienced, but that's something I've experienced a lot because I'm, you know, A, I've been a lamb, but B, I've been a vulnerable, weak Christian, so... I, I chose that scripture because that shows the Lord's heart and motive is to say to the um, apostles and the elders, you know, feed my lambs, you know, and many brothers do, all, all, always they're feeding their lamb as they're giving the talks, they're all, you, know, you know, they're thinking of the everybody, you know, the Holy Spirit helps you think of everybody, motiv your motivation. So, you know, there's a, a lot of good brothers out there who who really do feed the flock and and the broadness of they cover the Holy Spirit through them covers the, everybody everybody gets fed from from these elders you know and that's that's been um, something I've wanted to support and get behind is is my brothers you know I love my brothers you know and I love God 
So this is my uh, motive really. First uh, John 4, 19, 19. Uh, we love him because he first loved us. Now, the only reason that I'm, I have these motivations was, is because Christ first loved me, um, like, like us all. Uh, and that's why I love him, because he's shown I've received that love. And, and he's shown me that love faithfully, continually throughout my walk, you know. And I, you know, I've got this far in, because of faith, because he, he loved me first. And, and that's the only reason I was able to continue, because I've, I received his love. Um, so that's one of my motives. Uh, this is a, another scripture. Isaiah 52, verse 11 to verse 12. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord your will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward, re, 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 rear guard. It's spelled R-E-R-E-W-A-R-D, re reward. So rear guard, that's your rear guard action. So it's very interesting. I When I left school, my first job was a chef, um, just to work on the farm. And it was a sheep farm. It, well, it was a it was a multiple farm. It was uh, uh, sheep, uh, cows, and pigs, and they were all free range. They're all you know they're all kept outside. And one of my first jobs was to tend the, the sheep in the morning, about you know early hours of the morning. And when when the ewes were lambing. And they were pregnant. They uh, they would get if they were asleep on their backs. They couldn't always get back up. So one of my first responsibilities as a young man was to a part of my job throughout. You know, it's about a 12, 12, uh, 12 hour plus day some days. And my first job was like before the sun was up was to go and check his you know his flock to see if but his flock was money you know it wasn't love uh, and uh, this was my point um if you think of a shepherd in israel uh you know they knew the sheep by name and they would call them and the sheep would follow now i've experienced that with so many different animals uh, you show them your love they, they will come to you, they will run to you. I, I've experienced this with human beings as well. When you uh, care for people, you know, they they will follow you or, they, you know, they look out for you and come, come to you, you know. And um, so that's an interesting, uh, you know, opposite. Whereas in a you know, Westerner shepherd, he uses a dog. Well, and... You know, an ancient shepherd, you didn't have a sheep dog to round your sheep up. You just whistle or call them by name, and they all come running to you because they know that you care for them and you love them and you feed them. And it's interested here that the shepherd leads, but also he's behind. And it, now that reminds me of the tribe of Dan. They were the rear guard action force in the, you know, in the. Uh, his, the Israeli army, if you like, when uh, Joshua, you know, um, the Lord raised that army and divided them up into their tribes, and they, each, each tribe had a different role on the battlefield, and, and, and the tribe of Dan were the, were the smallest and the weakest of the tribes, you know, and they fell away because the people at the front weren't looking out for them, and it all... You know, because the, the the head sinned, the biggest tribe sinned. It, it the consequences go down the line. They all follow suit, and and the fallout was that the the, the tribe of Dan were, were left a bit further in the background. You know, and and then they they done the most wicked things. And but it's interesting here that that the the Lord is not only you know the the head leader. 
he's also the, the one at right at the back and that's what I can relate to and that's what I've seen in my testimony so I wanted to include that and also the scripture goes very well with Corinthians, Second Corinthians 2 uh, chapter 6 you know depart ye, depart ye, go go ye out from hence, touch no unclean thing, go ye out of the midst of her you know who's her? It's Babylon. You know, you know that's what uh, Judah sinned with, uh, committed adultery with Babylon, and the, and the whole of Israel followed suit. So that's like today. It's a parallel in today in the falling away. You know, the the Christian Church has um, in bed with the Church of Rome. It's you know, and 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 and, and it's the same. Reiteration of Second uh, Corinthians chapter six: Separate, come out, and then the Lord will bless you. You know, and I've experienced that. Come out from that, and then, you know, stay separate. And that's another thing. I'm another thing. I'm I'm, I'm a believer in is separating from the world and anything that's not in line with the scriptures. Within within really, you know, I I live with my father. He's unsafe, but. Um, that's my circumstance, it's not something I've chosen. And I'm not yoked to my father in in too much regard because I'm an equal homeowner, so, uh, and that's another story. So um, it, the yoke's not so uneven as it could be, but it is an uneven yoke, so I am guilty in that regard. But um, everything else, that's one of my things I need you know, that will, will be dealt with in time. But uh, everything else I've come out of, I've separated. You know, the Lord, I fell into the Mormon church and the Holy Spirit called me out of that and i come out of that and I've separated from all the... And I and from that experience, that, that brought me back to when I first called on the Lord, you know, basically that there's only two churches, the body of Christ and, the, and her, the world, you know, Babylon. And I... I won't touch it, I have nothing to do with it, you know, I preach to it and, and reach out to it and, and uh, teach the word, preach the word when when I've got the opportunity, but I won't, I won't join hand in hand with, with anyone that is involved with that because I know that will affect me spiritually and I think that is a very you know, uh, parallel scripture, it, uh, Isaiah 52, uh, verse 11 to 12. <clears throat> there's, another, um, there's another scripture uh, about the rear, uh, the rear guard, the re, re, I can't pronounce that word, rear ward. I think it's rear ward, it's called, not rear. I think the translation to that is rear guard, you know, like the checkpoint Charlie. The rear guard action, you know, the person at the back of the queue, he gets a different perspective as the person up the front. Um, let's read it out. Isaiah 58, so it's the same, I think it's, no, it's uh, six chapters on. Isaiah 58, verse 7 and 8. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor, that thou cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou covereth him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, question mark. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy right righteousness shall go before thee, the glory of the Lord shall be your reward, reward. So that's that's um, in heart, that's looking out for the weak, looking out for the feeble, looking out for the poor, sharing your substance, you know, uh, being charitable like the Good Samaritan. And, and the Lord's promised that, you know, that he, you'll be blessed and your, uh, your righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be your back up you know the lord will back you up when you live right when you're separate so i wanted to include that scripture because it mentioned you know the the, the charitable side that the, to be considerate to feed feed the lord's lambs to look out for the the feeble and the weak and i think that's what 
partly what that's inclusive of, that, that heart, that spirit. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've put this scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 2.15, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Now that, that reiterated when I was dealing with all of these cases, you know, I've um, judged myself, you know, in the light of scripture, in my faith, in my reliance on the Lord, in my, my conviction of when I've been corrected, in, you know, in going to the Lord and saying, you know, I've done wrong now, sorry, you know, show me, help me, help me, I can't, you know, I can't do it, sort of thing. And so uh, that's made me spiritual, That that's kept me spiritual, that's kept me out of my, above my nature, above my flesh. Although I have the flesh, it's all, I always ignore it, you know, I, I, I've been given that gift to, that strength in, in that regard, that spiritual blessing to not be caught up in my flesh so much. Although, though I suffer with a lot of fresh, fleshy problems, one was uh, because of my insecurity, because of my uh, uh, the trauma and the um, disassociation and, and the impact of what that trauma is, that traumatic experience I had as a child and the damage that does, that that made me quite vain. And then, and then you know, I could, that, could, that made me proud, that led me into pride, that led me into taking root and thinking, oh, the big I am because of the spiritual blessings I had. So that was one part of my flesh, my sin, that I had problems with. Um, but, uh, but I was able to be honest and recognize that because of the spiritual blessing I had so one counters out the other where my fault was I was not confessing my sins really I was confessing them to the Lord but not really confessing them to other people you know because of my walks being very personal and uh, I've not really been around a lot of church bodies to to have the opportunity to be open and honest with people so I've all kept it to myself so that's one thing an area I needed to look at you know I'm confessing my sins to the Lord but but it enabled and then dealing with these people especially my friend oh how dare you judge me you can't judge well that you know I looked at that subject about making judgments but making righteous judgments and being the Lord has judged and, and and when you judge yourself in the Lord, when you judge yourself with the Lord, you don't you're justified and you confess your sin. You don't need to justify yourself to any man. And that, that scripture really strengthened me and that was part of the building block of dealing with this opposition, these um these assaults on your you know, so you don't get knocked sideways because you have, uh, you know, how dare you judge me? Oh, yeah. And then they show you the scriptures, you know, don't judge, you know. Well, you've got to show all the other scriptures. And that was main the main scripture that built me up to deal with these, these, these attacks from false Christians, from carnal Christians. So I wanted to um, include that scripture. And also, um, dealing with my friend, I was worried that, you know, should I, you know, wavering again, should I have rebuked him and or should, with the scriptures, with the spirit? Well, absolutely, I ha he had to be, you know, I, 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 he needed that exhortation. If I'd have ignored it and gone a wishy-washy, it wouldn't have done any of us any good. So I, th that, I had to be firm and, and stick to my convictions. I judged myself. And I had to uh, combat that. I had to uh, defend the faith. So that was an experience where that that had, having all that build up, that was the exercising of that that um, strengthening. So that was another experience that, that I wanted to share because it, it strengthened me. So I had to deal with all all the attacks on. Oh, you can't. Oh, 
you can't judge me and then I had all the scriptures to, to reply to him because I studied it free because I judged myself. I judged myself in the light of scriptures, in my faith, in my trust in Christ. Um, but one of my concerns was, you know, have I, then after I had to evaluate, well, how, have I dealt with that right, you know? And I'm still questioning that because I'm learning, you know, I'm not perfect, I'm not a, I'm not one of the most strongest Christians. I, I wouldn't consider myself like an elder, although I'm, I, I'm more mature than I have been, but I, I, I see myself more as supporting the elders. You know, I'm, a, I'm just a brother and I want to defend the faith and I support my the elders, the brethren, and I look up to the brethren. And, you know, I look up to, I'm seeking to look up to every brother and sister with that love, as like, like the scripture says, you know, to don't consider it, you know, consider all better than yourself, you know, and I re really seek to live that truly in spirit and truth without kidding myself, without trying to do it in the flesh, but to, to have the spirit do that for me, that's what I've sought. Um, so I was very mindful of, uh, because I, going through that back and forth with my Christian friend and because and, and, and I know his personal history, I thought, well, you know, is he, you know, he's vulnerable, he's weak, have I done, to, have I overdone it, you know? So I was re-evaluating that and I put this scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. Now exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men. So uh, that's quite a, a pack lunch of advice there. Um, warn them that are unruly. Now he was being unruly, so I had to exhort, exhort him. Um, with the scriptures, comfort the feeble-minded. Now, that's something I, I try, this is what this video is about, I'm hoping in faith that this is going to reach somebody similar to me, it's, it's going to comfort them, in, because they may be feeble-minded, I'm feeble-minded, I have a, you know, I've had a severe learning disability, but my relationship the Lord's built me up and show me I have that feeble mindedness. But I have the mind of Christ as well, and so does all feeble minded people in in the body of Christ. You know, we're all brethren, we're all one in Christ Jesus. So that's a scripture I wanted to lay down as well and be patient towards all men. And this is another scripture that covers this ground, 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 8, verse 9 to 12. But take heed lest any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. So that, that's, an, that, that's Paul saying to, to any brother, really, that, we're, you know, because we've been given the freedom and liberty, you know, you, you can go away, you can go on. Some people could really exceed and they may knock other people off their faith because they're strong and they perhaps don't know any difference. So I think this was what the scriptures are addressing. Be careful in your liberty. Be careful with your testimony. Be careful with your mouth, what you say. And try, you know, I can't really knock any elders out there because, they're, you know, I admire them. But I think this is what this was dealing with is to for everyone including myself you know i've i've probably not people flying i know i have but i wouldn't say i've not hopefully not knocked any brother and sister's faith or not them over to be a stump you know cause a stumbling block in their way and that's something i'm very conscious about and that's what was troubling me about dealing with my friend have i have i said anything that's a stumbling block but re-evaluating it i I, I've done it, I, I really, I'm not patting myself on the back, but I feel I've done it in the spirit and I sought the Lord and what the scripture said and I just 
and it all the experience come come to the fore and I was able to lay out the scriptures one by one. But I was also mindful have I, you know, cast a stumbling block in this way. And uh, and uh, you know f evaluating it, I realised no I haven't. He was in the wrong. So he needs to, you know, the Lord will I've just handed that over to the Lord and, and I pray for the the brother and his family that and, and keep myself separate for my own because he really hurt me, you know, that re that was a real treacherous thing to do. You know, I likened him to, like, the, the guy that resisted Paul, you know, the blacksmith. He was really that bad. He just wouldn't listen to the word. And, I, uh, and you know, that's quite upsetting. That's upset me for a few days, and I thought, well, I just need to, you know, hand this over to the Lord and rest in the Lord and leave it with him to judge, you know, not 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 let me judge and thankfully my flesh hasn't reacted because I know how my flesh would react it would really we would go head to head and I think that's why the spirit first holy spirit first told me to separate from this this brother but I didn't listen I was too soft so that was a le that was a le consequence of the lesson um so I wanted to add this scripture but take heed, lest that by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee which has knowledge sit at meet in an idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols, and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish, for whom Christ died. But, but when ye sin, go against the brethren. But when ye sin, so go... When... But when ye sin so against the brethren, the wo and wound their weak conscience, ye sin it against Christ. Now I know the context there is putting down a brother for what he eats. If you know it was sacrificed to the idol and he didn't, and then you hammered it for him, that can really be a stumbling block. Now I was applying the same heart, not not the context, but the heart within this context, to. You know, you can apply that to many other areas in a brother's walk or a sister's walk, the brethren. Um, that so there's a lesson there, not just you know, not just in the context, but what the heart and mind of the Lord was teaching in that context. You know, the heart and mind in the Lord. Well, you you could apply that the same heart and mind in a different context and gain the lessons from this, and that was trashing a brother for the wrong reason you know for not understanding because you might be strong in an area and lack an understanding of where this person is coming from and you could be out of line with the scriptures and 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 what you know in, in this case it was to do with eating you know eating something on your conscience in that you knew that was sacrificed to an idol and that brother didn't well what well, what this is saying in this context just keep your mouth shut you know don't say anything because it doesn't really matter anyway it doesn't make doesn't change the food it only changed the experience if you're eating that food knowing it was willingly no and if he if that young brother knew it was sacrificed to idols he wouldn't it wouldn't be eating it so it's just saying to to, to teaching us to be careful what we say and how we deal with you know you might be strong and you may not realize how you're knocking your head against someone else and knocking them off the path so this is what this scripture was covering so i wanted to put add that as well now this scripture was because of about the Calvinist brethren. Now I don't know if they're Calvinists. I just just suspected from all what I've learned from brothers and the doctrine that Calvinists teach. I know that there's five avenue. I'm not an expert. There's five points of doctrine that Calvinists, you know, tenets of faith that they stick to. And I and I feel that some of these are it applies to this scripture, which is Galatians two verse four. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they may bring us us into bondage. And that's what I felt with these people. That's what I discerned, you know, uh, with these people and reasoned. And 
and from the scriptures discern that you know they're either plants and they're deliberately teaching those things and I'm not saying that that's the case with all all the all those people but this particular person that's what I discerned that he was deliberately one of those to spy us out and lead people astray um, Second Peter two verse one to three, but there were but there were false prophets also among the people. Even so, there shall be false teachers among you, speaking about anyone in the future, and that's so much more relevant today. That speaks so much more, so much volume today. Uh, this scripture, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies privately, see, they privately bring them in. Uh, that's almost, that goes with the other scripture, that they, just to spy you out, they're, they're spies, you know, they come in uh, imitating real Christians, Bible-believing Christians, and they, they you know, they, they speak the same rhetoric, the King James believers, and then and then they listen and they agree with that, but then they don't agree with this, and then it causes a division and a deliberate plant. Uh, and my, my belief is, my reasoning is that my conclude, <coughs> conclusions or concluding is that they're Jesuits, that, you know, they're from the Catholics, they're plants, they're like, assass you know, like gospel assassins. They've come in to deliberately cause these problems. Uh, and bring upon themselves uh, pr who privately shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction and many shall follow the pernious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of so these people not only lead people away also the world looking at Christianity makes them mock the gospel slag off the Lord and slag off the gospel it's all a load of nonsense these are really wicked people you know it's a real horrible divisive action that these Jesuits and if you study the Jesuits and what their oath is what the oath they swear you, you start to see where all this is coming from you know from Satan through that through that um those people, wicked, spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I know that's demons and from Satan, but it's also the people that entertain those high spirits and they're in that high position. They've, you know, the Catholic Church is the daddy on the earth, isn't it? The mother, the mother of harlots and on, on, the, on the city of Seven Hills. It, that, that's a high place, you know. The, the, the Pope of Rome is... He, He's on a high seat, he's on a high chair, you know, he's all he's a king in his own right, he's an emperor, you know, he's a head of a church, a head of a nation, he's in the high seat, he's one of the ones in the high places, spiritual wickedness in high places. Um and through cover covetousness, now they cover the gospel, you know, through their cover through their desire to own everything. You know, they want to own the gospel, they want to own all business, they want to own the world, they want to dominate, they want to cover everything for themselves. To be the masters in like a spoiled child who wants all the toys in the corner. Shall they with fain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So that's a pretty serious warning to these people. Now... We don't know the time scale of the Lord, and we don't see those individuals that are judged, but those individuals that are judged are just replaced because the whole thing is is going to remain on the earth until we know the part revelation where the kings turn on it and destroy it. Uh, but that isn't in our you know that isn't in our day. It has to come in the future, so it may not. You may question why doesn't the Lord judge these people, but when you look at the grand scheme of things, the Lord's got everything in his hands, it's all in his control, it's all in his wisdom, and he, he judges individuals on an individual basis. But the whole church, the whole whore, is not going to be judged until that time. 
Um, and that's where I feel that these this Calvinist, and that's where I reckon the original doctrine come from. It was, you know, the Counter Reformation. It was all plant tears planted, seed the enemy planting those seeds, which has been there in the beginning. You know, even even in Christ had to deal with it in in the, with the Pharisees and the, the Sadducees. You know, the, it's a similar thing, a similar pattern. Um, this is a scripture that uh, is good for the believer when they come across that fusion that I come across. Well, you know, who are the brethren? Who are the real Christians? Who are they? And, it, and here it is in a nutshell. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be manifest among you. So the Lord knows that these people are there. Uh, although it's wicked and it's bad, but, you know, it's wise that we've got the contrast of the true and then we've got all this, this heretical teaching and these heretics and all these heresies or these false teachings. So you can measure to find um, which one is true, you know. You've got to approve yourself, find yourself approved in the scriptures, find who is approved from the scriptures by being a Berean and studying out each teacher. Now, you can get truth in all the false teachers because they, they, they imitate, they, they're, they're keeping an eye on what the real ones are doing or and they're picking out the bits that sound right, you know, the tinkling brasses and the the symbols, you know, they, they sound they sound like Christians, but when you measure when you when you when you take a few and you measure them in the word, you, you start to filter out who who are the who are the true and who are the false. And that scripture helped me to do that. There's another scripture. First John 4 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now you can't you, you can't just rely on the Holy Spirit. You you have the Holy Spirit's discernment. Everyone's got that gift. Now, now, now that needs that needs developing and that might depend on your lot in life or not. I can't really say, but the gift of the Holy Spirit is what what works through you to to guide you and and help you discernment. You may discern these things. So that's what. So that's an invitation to try the spirits to compare with the spirit you know and the spirit that's led you. But you also need the Word. You need the Word of God, and that's how you try the spirits is by the Word of God. And that confirms the spirit that you, that's inside you that, you, that the believer has, and the word of God, which is spirit. So you, that's how you try the spirit. Um, and this was reassuring to me because going through these these persecutions and attacks, not very really nice, but um, you know you can rejoice because when, when you when you read when you turn to the Lord and go, Lord, I know help me you know you, you go to the scriptures and, and then you get the help uh, 2 Timothy 3 uh, 12 to 17 yea and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution so it's, an, it's all part of the parcel you will suffer these things and you will get it uh, as I've discovered you, you, you get it every time you witness you, you get you get persecuted whether that's family whether that's you know witnessing whether that's you know whether you're not witnessing you will get persecution but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse it's going to get worse deceiving and being deceived but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and thou hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them and that from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, who are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, 
and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So again, that's reaffirming the authority the believer has of the scriptures. And the comfort is that, you know, the Lord knows you're going to get persecution. Um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the, these, that's another sign when, when you're giving scriptures and they're not being listened to. Uh, I think that's a sign that something, you know, obviously something's not right, because if you're... If you're, you're a person who loves the Lord and loves the scriptures and you hold, you know, you, the scriptures are precious to you and then you try and share them and you don't get the reaction you expect, you get the you get the persecution and, and, and your character assassinated or your doctrine overturned that you're holding to, you know, that's a sign that these people perhaps haven't been saved, they haven't feared the Lord. And they they despise wisdom and instruction. The wisdom and instruction in the Holy Word. They they don't believe the Bible. But they say they they do. They say they're Christians and they say they believe the Bible. But when 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 it comes down to it, and you do, and and you come across these people, it finds them out, and then you find out that oh these fools, they despise wisdom and instruction because they don't believe the Bible. You know. Now that may be because they're just proud and they're a bit rattled, and they may that may, they may come good after that. I don't know. I don't know what's in the believer's heart, but uh, or anyone's heart. But that's a sign that something's not right in that Christian's walk, or that that Christian isn't a, a saved. It's not a Christian. It's not born again. Um, Statues, uh, Psalm 19.8 The statues of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. If any, uh, James 1.5 uh, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. <coughs> So that's reaffirmation, uh, reaffirm, reaffirm it, uh, just confirmation uh, that if any of you need anything, you just ask the Lord, let him ask, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. So the Lord's generous in in giving, in in teaching. He wants, you know, willing to teach, willing to share. The, the you know a fearful heart and a, a true sincere spirit he wants to any you know he's not going to say no and and I love this word and a braid if not a braid if means he does, he's not scornful he's not he's not going to bite your head off he's not going to be cross with you he's not going to be all angry like an angry dad you know, ask your dad for saying, oh, not now, I'm busy, or go away, I'm in a mood, you know, or whatever. No, he, he won't He won't scorn you, he will, he's patient and gentle, and, and if you're sincere, he will, he will give you the answer. So that's a good um, confirmation that if you ever need your, your bowl filling, that the Lord's willing to fill it, if you're, if you're humble and you're sincere and you're genuine. Well, I'm going to get on to the uh, scriptures that, that I've, I've dug out about lying and uh, the seriousness of it, and, the, and then I'll conclude this video. Uh, why I hate lies. I hate liars. I hate lying. And and I really do feel like that. I re it does really make me angry. It does make me cross, and because I, I know the hurt of it, and I don't, you know, I don't lie. Um, I don't like lying, so I don't think it's something fitting for a Christian to be lying. And when I come across one that does, it really shocked me in a way. It didn't really shock me, but it yeah, it did shock me. It, it, 
it's not something I've encountered really. So I thought, well, how, are you a Christian? You know, are you a believer? You know, so it made me question. His, and I was honest about my my concerns, and I said it, and then, but that didn't help anything. I just got you know ripped out even more. And I didn't want to question his faith, so that's why I didn't say you're not saved. I'd never do that. I said, I'm questioning if you are saved. And if he was saved, it ain't going to make any difference. If he isn't saved, it might make him question and then go and get saved, you know. So I think I've done, I know I've done the right thing. Um, and I, I found this scripture, you know, pondering through my experiences and, and going to the Lord and going to the Word. This is some of the in scriptures I got up, and also to do with with lying. It re reasserted how the Lord feels, and what I was it feeling was how was what the Holy what the Lord was feeling through the and I was experiencing that through the Holy Spirit. Um, 1 Corinthians 2.16 For who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. You know, so we do have the mind of Christ. We do, you know, we do have that fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So these things are, you know, when we feel vexed, when we feel angry, when we feel wrathful, when we feel, you know, we, you know we're not to take that wrath any further, but you know, we do feel that wrath, and that that's not a wrong thing to feel. It's wrong when you go and sin and act on that wrath. That's when you need to you need to know the other scriptures and hand that wrath over to the Lord. Let the Lord, the, you know, the Lord will revenge. You know, the Lord will deal with that wrath. You know, uh, it's not for us to do, deal with. Uh, so I wanted to add that scripture because that reaffirmed what my feelings and what I was feeling. Philippians 1, 27. Um, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent. So this is Paul speaking to the people there and, and all the way, the whole church body, right up until the end. Um, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Now, when I came across, you know, like I suppose everyone that experienced it, they come across the internet, they see all this diversity in the Christian body, and you think, well, and you read this scripture, and you, and you go, why aren't why aren't we following this? You know, but the, the, but we are. It's just that there's so much corruption either side of us that you don't you not when you first look you don't see who the body are or where the body are and then you have to consider we're all learning and growing and 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 we've all been either side of the, you know we've all strayed either side of the the straight and narrow so it's very hard to and I think experience build you up where you, you don't get tossed so much and then the Lord holds you up firmly and and then you and then you meet those people, brothers and sisters that do have the who are striving for the same things to have you know for the faith of the gospel to have one to stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel and that's how you I think you've that's part of finding yourself approved as you're going through this your walk and learning and when you make a mistake or you're transgressing however long you're transgressing if you keep your eye on the Lord you, he will bring you straight again you know whichever way you go so that that, that reaffirms what Paul was saying you know what Paul was wishing what he was hoping what he's prophesying um, Psalm uh, 101, 101 verse 7. He that work here for... This is getting into lies now. I'm going to cover the, the scriptures I picked out about lying. Uh, he that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. 
He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Now that's the Lord expressing this, how he feels about deceitful people or not dwell in his house or in his body. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. So if you are a Christian and you're lying, you will, you will lose the fellowship of the Lord instantly. That's what I would interpret that scripture. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. You know, um, Psalm 119, 163. I hate and adore, adhor lying, but thy law do I love. That's, um, that's the spirit of the Lord in, in the psalmist. I hate and adore lying, and I can relate to that. And I think all believers can, all sincere believers can, can relate to this scripture, this division. Uh, I hate and adore lying, colon but thy law do I love. Proverbs 12, 22. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Proverbs 13, 5. A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Proverbs 19, 5. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Isaiah 32, verse 7. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. Ezekiel, Isaiahkiel. Ezekiel 13.22 Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Did I read that correctly? Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthen the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Interesting. Zephaniah, Zephaniah 3, 13. Now I've found two scriptures here. This is interesting. Zephaniah and Zechariah. And one's 3, 1, 3. And one's one three three, so one's three thirteen, the other one's thirteen three. I just thought that was interesting. So Zephaniah, Zephaniah, number thirteen, uh, verse thirteen. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. So that's a promise to, you know, that's speaking of Israel, um, faithful Israel, uh, all the heart and mind of, you know, like the body of Christ, like the mind of Christ. The remnant of Israel, or the body of Christ, shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall, it, shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. And of course, that's that's the per, you know that's the ideal, that's the spirit, that's not our flesh, because we can, you know, we can be unjust, we can sin, and we can fall down. But that's speaking, prophesying of of you know heaven, you know, and that that's the qualities that's going to be within Israel and and the body, you know, the believers, all all saints. Zechariah 13, 3. And it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, prophesy, then his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesieth. Now I think that's talking of the... I'm not sure. I think that's talking of the... 
millennium in the future or yeah I'm not really sure if that's in the time of um, Jacob's trouble or the millennium that's something I need to study through further um, Acts 5 3 to 4 but Peter said Ananias why have Satan filled my heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land whilst it is remained was it not thine own and after it was sold was it not in thine own power why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart thou hast not lied unto men but unto God now now if you've read that the, the whole context of that scripture that was the uh, the early believers giving up all their substance now they didn't have to do that but that was something that they desired to do what I mean is they didn't have to give all their money they could have said oh, you know they might have had a just reason to, to put a bit aside for their own ministry uh, or their own needs but you know people were giving up everything for the early church and the and the brethren because it was a, a baby you know and it was it needed that at the time to you know that's a great testimony and these two couple you know they didn't they could have kept back a bit and said look we're keeping it back a bit and we're going to give you half of it but no they didn't they kept they lied they hid that from the holy spirit and uh peter discerned that and they died, you know, the Lord, came, you know, he wasn't having that lie, he, you know, that was a lie to the Holy Ghost, that was a, that was a right black mark, and they dropped down dead one after the other, and all the saints feared, because of the seriousness of, of lying, you know, it's very serious, lying is very serious, because you're not only lying to yourself, you're lying to your brothers and sisters, you're lying to the world, but you're lying to God ultimately. You know, and God won't be mocked. You know, He's not. We might live by faith, but He's not unfeeling. He's not. It doesn't. It's not anything. It doesn't get on. You know, that doesn't pass His eyes. All things are before the Lord. So, you, lying is a, a very serious, uh, serious thing indeed. Um, Ephesians 4.25 Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbour, for we are members one of another. So that's even, you know, even with, with in, in the church, you know, even with when we're living right, you know, we're, we are members one of another, you know, we're, we're, we're also an example to the world, so... You know, lying's not a good. A, it's not good in the in the church, and it's a not. You know, if somebody knows you're a liar, you're a hypocrite. You know, that's a bad. That that gives the gospel a bad impression if people know you're lying, and it, and if you if you're honest, you know that's a good testimony because uh, with anybody, you know, because it that can be really refreshing is that when someone's life if people you know like in our world today people lie it comes off their tongue like water they're always lying they don't even the conscience is so seared they're just automatically lying you know you can't trust anybody and when you when they come across an honest sincere person that can really be a contrast some people it's refreshing and that can that could be a good testimony. Other people hate it, you know, the wicked hate it. You know, they hate liars, you know, they, they hate honest people, they hate good people, because they see it as a weakness, and they see their lying as a strength. Um, Psalm 101, verse 5. Whoso privately, privily slandereth, slandereth his neighbour, him will I cut off. Him that have a high look and a proud heart, will I not suffer? Colossians 3.9 Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Because we, we, you know, that we are capable of lying. We, we say little white lies, you know. Sometimes you might have a weakness, you lie to save face. 
uh, you might lie to someone who's asking you advice about something and you don't want to hurt their feelings so you lie you know there's so many degrees of lies um, we know the case in the scriptures of Abraham lied you know it's a lie nevertheless but the circumstances you know it stopped um, you know to do with um, the Pharaoh or you know coveting Sarah you know, and he lied and said, you know, it's his sister or, or something. But he lied, nevertheless. Uh, Psalms 1, uh, 116, 11. I said in my haste, all men are liars. And all men are liars, you know. We, Christ has uh, revealed we're all liars. Um, anyone that doesn't, you know, anyone that denies... Jesus Christ come in the flesh is a is a liar, is an antichrist and a liar, because Christ is the only righteous. So he he found us out all liars. You know we're all liars. We're all born liars. First um, Timothy one ten, for whoremongers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind for men stealers, for liars, for purged persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Um, Revelation 21 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, you know, quite clear. And my final uh, scripture on my list, and there, there's so much more that, that I could have dug out um, and searched out. Uh, Revelation 22:15. For without a dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and make a lie. So that's quite clear. There's quite a, you know, a diverse selection of scriptures there of the heart and mind and will of the Lord and how he feels about lying. And uh, that's what, that's the concern I had with my friend. He lied and uh, that, you know, I, and on top of the lies I'd experienced, that was, that was a, a quite a, ser a quite a serious offence. I felt quite a serious offence indeed. And he didn't seem to, you know, I don't know what his heart was feeling quietly, but he was n not dealing with that or not. I, j I just felt he wasn't. Um, I could see he wasn't believing in the scriptures. You know, he was reacting in the flesh. So whether he's a carnal Christian and and proud, but I mean, something that I, I pray he deals with, and uh, that's that was one of the, you know. It's funny how that I'd already in my in my heart and mind decided to do this uh, video on lying, and as I was doing it, I went through that experience. So that was a double extra on top of it, and that's what I why I included it in the overall um, discussion and, and testimony. So I leave that now, I, that, that's concluded, and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.